Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another tutorial here on Glass Hand. Today what we're going to be talking about is the random color shader inside of Octane version 3. And there's some tweaks to it that kind of got me uh, thrown off when I was using X Particle. So I thought it'd be a good tutorial to go ahead and talk about and show you guys. So this one will be pretty quick, but I think you guys will get a lot out of it. So here we are in one of our example scenes. Uh, it's kind of like this corridor. And what I have done is just placed all these really cool... Sorry about that. Let me just get my keyboard out of the way. Uh, this controls the actual uh, wirecast recording, so let me just put that out of the way. Okay, so like what I was saying in this uh, in this scene here, uh, we have these light panels, and uh, they're actually they were generated by cloner, and um, these panels are actually emitting light. So let's zoom into this one and take a look in our tree. Okay, so uh, you can see that we have. Uh, two cloners that are generating lights on the back portion over here and what we need to do with this cloner is uh, let's just go into the properties of this one to the object uh, you know it's very simple just dragging an object under the cloner and then uh, you know making it duplicate three times what we need to do though is check on the render instances and then we can hit C on the keyboard what that will do is just add the primary uh, base mesh that we generated and the other two will be render instances and we definitely want render instances for Octane. It helps save on VRAM. Uh, so there's been a lot of scenes where we'll have like bolts or some stuff for clients and um, you know we have to duplicate those many times so it's just really easy to go ahead and put it in a cloner and then go ahead and hit C and collapse it into uh, these render instances. Okay, so it will make it a null for you, but that's fine. Um, let's just zoom out a little bit, and we're gonna go back, and we're gonna do this one by hand. So we're, I'm just gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and select the cloner. Uh, what that will do is duplicate it in the Y. Uh, I would like to duplicate it in the uh, X. So let's go ahead and just make this zero, and then in the X, I'm gonna move this over I believe we can stop at like 135 just because I've been setting this scene up. I just kind of know that number off the top of my head. And then let's go ahead and duplicate it uh, five times so it's in the corridor. And then we'll do what we said. We'll click the render instances, select the cloner, and hit C on the keyboard. And we will get the same result. Okay, so what's so cool about... Um, cloning these guys and using the render instances. Well, if you're using the render instances, then we can use utilize a really cool um, shader called the random color. So I just went ahead and shut off all these different channels so that we can just look at the emission channel and we'll go into it and we need to make sure we're using a diffuse shader and we will go into the texture portion. Uh, we'll come back to this later. Uh, we are using a mixed texture and then when you add the mixed texture you just need to let's just go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna redo it for you guys so I'm gonna copy that channel let's clear this out so we're brand new uh, let's just go to C4D Octane and mixed texture we're gonna say texture and let's paste our image so you know it's just a standard image texture uh, I have a whole bunch of these like HDRs. The Lightsmith you can get from, uh, I'll leave the link in the description to HDR Labs, and then you can download the Softbox A uh, EXR. So the gamma needs to be one uh, because it's a floating point information. So let's go up one more. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be mixing. The first texture slot, I am going to put a float texture. And I will explain this a lot better. We'll put it to one. I'll explain why I'm using a float texture here in a minute. And then here we are going to add the random color. So in the mix texture, the first amount slot is our image. So this is our floating point EXR, and it is the softbox, of course. So this texture one is actually going to be controlling what is the darkest color, and texture two will be controlling the lightest color. So we're remapping this black and then a random white color for this image here. 
So you can use this for all kinds of different images. Um, say you have like a roughness map and you want to change the color of the of like say the fingerprint glossiness that you guys have. Um, some of those maps that you've gotten from other tutorials on the channel. You can remap the colors of those here. I'm not sure if this texture one is the darkness or uh, if texture two is the brightness, but that's the idea. So just play around with it um, and you can see how it's working, okay? So let's go ahead and just send this to the live viewer. And then you can see uh, once we get it inside of the live viewer, we can begin tweaking this corridor with the emission slot and we can change the brightness. So if I turn down the brightness, you can see that each panel is emitting uh, a different type of color or lightness value. So let's go ahead and change uh, the seed. And as I change the seed, it will change the amount of illumination coming from the panels in the scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and just turn it to say like one. And it gives you a little bit of variation. Some are dimmer than others. And uh, it's pretty cool. So that's kind of a quick tip. Uh, I thought the sci-fi scene was really fun to work with. And uh, I think you guys will get a good use out of the... Uh, the random color in the emission slot. Now I do have an HDR that I shot on set this past week um, while working with the client. So let's go ahead and just turn that off. Uh, this HDR has a lot of blue in it, but you can still see that it looks pretty sweet even without the HDR. Okay, so our next example is using X particles. And uh, I promise we're gonna have an X particles uh, tutorial here on the channel. Uh, I absolutely love X particles. I've had to use it on multiple different projects. Um, but what I have right now, I'll just run you through what the XP system has. Um, to get X particles, of course, you need to have it installed and you can hit XP system. From there, you can choose uh, an emitter. So I created a standard emitter here. Uh, it's just, you know, the shape of it is in a circle and the emission, there is absolutely no speed and I have a four centimeter radius of the circles that are being generated, the spheres. And I believe that's it. You know, everything else is pretty much standard. And if you go to the, to the display, I have it just emitting spheres. But you could speed this up if you had something like circles um, instead of spheres. So, you know, it, it plays back a lot faster with, you know, not actual spheres drawing in just like these kind of curves. So. Let's just change it back to spheres so we can get it kind of an idea of what this needs to look like in our renderer. The one thing with Octane 3 that kind of tripped me up was that you have to add a Octane tag. And then in the actual Octane tag, you have to change under the particle rendering to sphere. And then you add a sphere, <laughs> just a regular sphere that you add to the scene you have to add that into the slot to begin shading it with a octane material. Um, I think that this is kind of weird, but you know, it wasn't like that in version two, I don't believe. I think you could just add a material to the XP emitter. But um, you know, if you change the type, you can change it from voxel, voxel sphere or none. Um, but with sphere, you can throw in this sphere here. Uh, before we go any further, let me just say that under the modifier, I did use, uh, under motion modifiers, I used a turbulence, turbulence and set it to curl. So that's how I'm getting this kind of noise. Everything else is default. Okay, so let's go ahead and load it up into Octane. It loads really quickly, and I just have a, a glossy material here. And under the diffuse, I am using a Octane gradient. And then in the gradient, I added this random color. So with the random color in this slot here, I can use the gradient to change uh, the colors here. So I've added a lot of really pretty colors. So let's go ahead and change like, let's say this one will be like super blue. That will add that into the mix and you can see it update here. Okay, so that will randomly shade uh, each particle. They'll randomly get a, a assigned uh, value here from this gradient and then everything else is just very standard 1.5 make it look kind of plasticky uh, but it runs really quick I mean we can see it responding here in the viewport it's really awesome in the live viewer um, some more things 
that we need to note uh, in the camera imager, I'm using this response curve. I've used this a lot. I know I tell you guys that, but it's really cool. Uh, I got the neutral res response turned on. Uh, I have in the post processing a little bit of bloom, some glare, a little bit of blur, uh, nothing, nothing too fancy here. And then, you know, F stop 1.8. Uh, let's turn off the autofocus and, you know, we can begin selecting points of focus that we want to focus on using control middle click in the live viewer, which is awesome. I have the aspect ratio set to three, which will stretch out the bokeh, uh, kind of almost like a um, anamorphic type of effect. But you can see there's no bokeh here. And then uh, I have the aperture edge at three. And then we can turn on motion blur, which is really cool. We'll have to resend the scene data. And let's say um, right now it's at like, what is this? I think it's like one, sorry, I keep hitting my mic stand. Uh, let's just try something. This is in seconds. So if you're familiar with using uh, cameras, you know, we can say uh, like a, one half second, you know, of course is 0.5 if we resend that. Let's see what this looks like. You can see the motion blur and it's uh, it's in real time. Um, let's go ahead and put it back to, let's say 0.06 or so. Actually, let's just go, go ahead and turn it off. I just wanted to show you that you can turn it on and get some awesome motion blur um, in almost real time. I just have one light that's placed above the scene. We can look at the size of it. It's just a standard light um, and it is just looking at the origin is just targeted at the origin 4500 and uh, 10 in the power oh sorry it's looking at this light target here and the one thing that I thought that was really weird in the actual particle rendering is that when you drop the sphere in you need to make sure that your sphere is relative to the size of the generation of the particles so um, I don't know why this is the way it is but I have a radius of four and then I have a variation of four centimeters so um, you know it's really varied you know you get these really tiny ones or you get the real big ones but in the actual tag I had to throw in the sphere and then I made the sphere half the size um, so watch what happens when I put it to four you know they get really big and obviously that's not what I'm seeing in the viewport so I put it to like half I'm not sure if that is going to work for every situation, but maybe this will get you to a good uh, spot in your project. So let's go ahead and show you one more thing um, that was really weird. So you can have this sphere in here, but you can also throw in another shape like this cone and you can kind of have both. So I guess this kind of makes sense once you know that it's here, but until, the <laughs> until then, uh, it's kind of weird, like just thumbing around trying to figure out how to get this to render and um, again the size of the cones really do matter so right now I'm scaling them in the viewport so and the collisions right here in the dynamics tab this XPP collisions is going to be based off of the spheres and the size that's generated from these numbers here but you can shade them and make them look like cones so that's pretty cool, actually. Um, now that I, now that I start thinking about it, because you could throw in any different uh, shape into here and start generating that from your uh, your sorry your simulations. All right, so you can simulate it with spheres, and then you know have it render different uh, types of uh, polygons or objects. Sorry. I'm a little scatterbrained today, so I'm getting this one up late too, so I definitely apologize for that. But um, I think that will about do it for this tutorial. So I hope this kind of cleared up how you can use a random color if uh, some of you guys were having trouble with it and shading the particles. And also, you know, you can use it for different light emissions. There's so many different variations of how you can use it, but, um, you know, it needs to be said that you can only pretty much use it with. Um, you can pretty much only use it with instances and particles. It has to, it's like a shading trick. So you can't just throw it onto a bunch of different objects in your scene. You have to use it in a way that the software is generating instances or it's generating particles. Um, so 
If you guys have any more to add to this conversation, please leave it in the comment section below. Leave your thoughts there. Um, that's where we're going to be able to communicate together. Uh, definitely, you know, you can download this project file. I'm going to put it on Gumroad. So if you want to support the channel, you can leave your support there. Um, or you can just get it for free. So whatever works for you. But uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I really appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care.